game series where we try to play board games with just what comes inside the box. Without going online for facts or rules clarifications. In this episode, we talk about infighting. Bar fight! <laughs> so, Luciana, I think you kind of like the game, right? <laughs> really? What can we say about this game uh, before people watch us playing it? The game is a chaos. Oh yeah, it's a mess. Uh, it really, indeed, reproduces what would be a bar brawl in a D&D, in, in, in any fantasy scenario. Everybody punches everybody, everybody yeah. kicks everybody, and so on. So congratulations to Rob Hain. So uh, he, he designed uh, a very light-hearted, fun, and chaotic game. Yes. We seldom get to talk about games in which the rules fit so seamlessly into the into the, the the idea the how can i say the fluff of the game and they they do they really do give us the rundown of the game luciana please it's simple like that you just roll the dice and you get a number of punches or chairs, punches or, chairs or dice or, or brawl and uh, no, so you have aos and you have uh, power so brawl is yeah. ao so the rolling of the die will decide what you are going to do. You are going to punch the character you're punch on left. your left, or you're going to... How can I say that? You, you can throw a chair right. Throw a, yeah. throw a chair in your right yeah, character. So the punch symbol means you attack the character on your left. The, the chair. The chair on your right. The power, the one with the most The one with the points. most victory points. The AO, with three AOs, you get to steal victory points of the player with more and more victory points, even if it's you, to... Um, to heal. To heal. And the luck, which is the luck die, which is the, which is the buy, dice, you buy action, action cards. Action cards. Ah, yeah. So there are two different types of cards. The yellow cards are your adventurer. This, sir. You have the adventurer. You have the... Ah, you separated them into, into yeah. two decks. But in the game, they are mixed up. You have bystanders which you can, like, you really put a, around your, your, your character in order kind of to protect it, him or her. And you have action cards that you hold uh, without everybody, without no, with nobody knowing what they are. So you can use them at the appropriate moment. And they give really good advantage sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some, and some adventurers, they are better attacking left or right, or they're better with their powers. Uh, every time you get, you are about to be knocked out or take three or more hit points, you get to roll the red dice. The, 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 that's the why there, there's one die that is red. Because you maybe have a, 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 the opportunity to defend yourself. And if you do, it's more chaotic things. Sometimes somebody else gets punched. Sometimes you, you give damage instead. Sometimes you just disappear. Sometimes, like, it, every character is completely different and completely... I don't. I don't know if I would say that uh, uh, beholder bar fly, There's a or beholder. if a human warlock, or if the the bartender is a drow. I don't. I wouldn't say they are creative, but they are very enjoyable to play and yeah. play against. And all of them, I think. There's no character that you say, ah, this character is not good at anything. Oh yeah, no. Every, every one of them has a characteristic that makes it really good at something in a mm -hmm. bar fight. Yeah, and you, then you, after you decide who you're going to uh, tackle, you roll the, 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 tw the 20 dice, oh. you roll the 20 die, and you, you check to see if you uh, hit low or high. You are going to give people damage. Uh, it's a matter of one or two or maybe three or four or five hit points. And your bystanders, they help you because they, they give you uh, buffers or bonuses or add Sometimes some Sometimes they random... abandon you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> some abandon you. Something else about the, the illustrations, about the pictures here. They seem to be original. This game is from the time of the 4th uh, edition D&D. And though the illustrations were made, uh, you don't have the author here. It just says 2007 Wizards. But the illustrations, to me, seem original. Uh, they weren't taken from any book, an D&D book that I know of, and I happen to have many of them. <laughs> so let's watch our um, time lapse, and we come back to talk about a little more about this game. Well, 
decide if this game passes the first play test or not, I would like to know what you think of the game, Sam. I really like this game. It's it's really enjoyable and it's good uh, playing with lots of people. Yeah, uh, it's a three to six player game, but you can play with three people or even yeah. four people, but the game really shines when you play with five and six with a full table. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't believe we have played with six people, but we played. I think five was the with five. Every time we have, every time we have five people here to play anything else, the first game that comes that we break open is uh, in fighting. It doesn't seem, but it's a, a, a quick game. Yeah, but I, I don't remember a because match you have playing to, more to get. 20 victory points and you see it like, wow 20 victory points but it's it's really but it's any, quick any any even that is messed up because <laughs> you you have to have 20 points and hold on to, to those victory points uh, until you are able to hit an other adventurer so sometimes you get the, the 20 points because you hit an adventurer but you didn't have 20 points then you have to hold on a whole turn. And everybody will attack you. Yeah, because if people heal, uh, they, they steal from your victory points. If you heal, you steal from your victory points. If you are, uh, if you have, uh, like, if you were the one with most victory points, people will attack you because you are the one with most victory points. People on your right will try to everybody hit you. Everybody wants to defeat left. you. Yeah. And um, it's, it's very hard to hold on to more than than those victory points. Uh, uh, it's very common uh, playing with five people that two, three people go over 20 and they can't hold it for maybe even yeah. two, two rounds. So even then, the game, I don't remember the last time we played this game that it took more than 40 minutes to play. Yeah. It's, it's always it's 40 really, minutes, really 30 quick. minutes. Yeah, I don't remember going over 50 minutes. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's that quick. So it's a great um, aperitif of a game. Yeah. I don't even know if there's a word in English. Um, <laughs> and so now let's talk about, okay, no doubt, very fun game, very cheap game. I think I bought it, it, it originally cost, uh, the, the original cost is $15, although it's an older game, so you can easily find, uh, like this one I think I bought from Noble Knight for, I don't know, $10, something like that. It's, it's very cheap. If you find it, buy it. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. Luciana. I don't think this game. <laughs> I don't think this game passes the first Why? play. It's very easy to interpret what is here. I, I I don't say. I'm not saying this game doesn't pass because the rules book. Because this game couldn't be more simple. Couldn't be more straightforward rules wise. It doesn't pass because what is the? How do we gauge if a game passes or not? How do we? What are we doing here? We check a game to see if it. If it can be played just using the rule book. No, just using what comes in the box. Oh, yes. So, this, I don't know, dice roller here doesn't come in the box. Uh, but your not father, really your father made it for us. It's not really necessary, okay, granted. But you need uh, something to, to uh, tally up your, your, your uh, hit points. And the, the hit points, points, the hit points of your bystanders and the victory points. There is nothing inside the box to that helps you do that. Yeah. We it's, ended it's up. It's really important. Yeah, it's fundamental, it's fundamental because you need to look at the other character on the other side of the table and see. Oh, that that guy has only three hit points. I'm gonna see if I can attack him or her. We end up using those glass beads here. But you can get some uh, dice from your other games and use like six-sided dice or like ten-sided dice. Huh? Beans. Or beans or, or toothpicks or... You can even jut down uh, like marks in a piece of paper, although it, it gets kind of difficult to... You, you go up and down all the time. Yeah. So you can use dice, you can use... Because the other, ca the other... Uh, the other players need, the other to, see players need to see and also you go up and down all the time so we're gonna need to be erasing so I, I recommend glass beads or, or beans or or I think dice, dice are the best yeah. you, you grab a bunch of six-sided dice and uh, and do that but the game doesn't come with anything that helps no. us in that yeah. so unfortunately I don't think he passes the first play test Sorry. <laughs> and I kind of feel bad about it because it's the second Wizard of the Coast game we have at this this show and this is the second time it doesn't pass so 
we're sorry, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it doesn't take the fun out of the game. No you way, can't no way. Have beads or it's a great beans yeah, it's or a... horn candles. <laughs> yeah, you can use uh, little chihuahuas, like a lot of chihuahuas <laughs> instead of little. Well, this has been another episode of First Play. We hope you liked watching it as much as we did recording it. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Gamerati YouTube channel. You won't regret it. I'm Luciana. I'm Marcelo. And we are the Gamerati. Gamerati.